Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we're going to begin discussing the Q data structure. So it's best to compare this to a stack data structure. So if you didn't watch my video on stacks, you probably should. However, if you really just need to know about a Q and you don't wanna watch all that garbage, then we're just gonna give you the essentials here because these are very, very similar. There's just one key difference. So first, let's take a look at the stack. So if we wanted to describe a stack's behavior, you would say that it is last in, first out, often abbreviated L-I-F-O. So again, if you imagine a stack of something and you're just adding, you know, one at a time, the last one you add to this stack, that is the one, the first one to be removed when you pop it off of the stack. So the last one in is the first one out. So queues are different in that they are first in, first out, or F-I-F-O. So the way a queue works is if you were adding these in a similar way that you did with the stack, well, the first one in is the first one out. Well, that first one placed in is going to be removed first. So for a stack, the last one is the first one out. For a queue, the first one in is the first one out. So those are the primary differences. So how could you visualize this in memory? How would this be stored? Well, when you think of storing data in a collection, you might naturally think to start at the left and fill it in this way. However, I would challenge you for a queue to think about it the other way. So we're gonna start adding elements from this side. So let's say we add the element five, and then we add the element 10, negative seven, seven, and then let's go with, oh geez, I don't know, 69, no, I'm just kidding. We'll go with three. How would we actually fill this collection? Well, we would start at the right, and one element at a time, we would add it to this collection. So we would add five, we would add 10, we would add negative seven, we would add seven, and then we would add three. If we wanted to remove data, well, which side is it gonna come out? Well, what was the first one added in? It's this one over here. So that one's gonna be the first one out. So it's gonna go out this way. So that is how a basic queue structure works. If you've ever been to an amusement park, you know all about queues because all of those lines, they have to wait in for like 62 hours straight. Well, it works exactly like a queue. The first person who gets to the roller coaster is the first person to ride the roller coaster. If you come in last, hey, you're gonna be waiting there for quite a long time. So just like a stack, a queue is an abstract data structure or data type. And what this means is it doesn't necessarily matter how you implement this. It can be implemented with an array, even a static array, or it could be a linked list or a doubly linked list or whatever you want it to be. However, there are two important operations that need to be met in order for something to be considered a queue. So just like a stack has push and pop, a queue has a similar set of operations. Those operations are NQ and DQ. So this is the equivalent of adding something to the collection, and this is the equivalent of removing something from the collection. So for a stack, this would be push and pop. It's just for different directions. All right, so here's an illustration I thought of on my own 100% and didn't copy off of Wikipedia. NQ would be over here. So we NQ data and add it to the back of the collection. You know, you're waiting in line and someone's like, get to the back of the line, you butt munch. That's what's going on here. Now over here, we can DQ. So this is the process of DQing, and this would be the front of the queue. Another way you can think about it is that something is gonna happen over here, and we're just adding new things to this collection to basically start moving forward and towards this direction. So in order for this element here to eventually be DQed, all the other elements are gonna have to be DQed first. You get in the back of the line, everybody in front of you has to go first. So humans, the people that don't study this kind of stuff, they know this concept as a line. 
you get in line for something. Us computer scientists, we like to call it a queue or this same concept can be known as a buffer. So whenever I think of buffer, the very first thing I think of is, you know, YouTube loading, you know, it's prepping some video content to be watched. Here's the content being watched. Here's everything that's being loaded. But this also has a lot of other uses. So think of a buffer as a padding. You know, if you're studying finances, you can think of your emergency fund as a buffer. It's a little bit of extra money that is just waiting around in case it needs to be spent. If over here, something super important is happening, you can think of our queue, a buffer of things waiting to be processed. Another example is when I create these videos, I might create five of them at a time, and then I go and edit all five of them. And I set these up to process on my video editor. So I can say, hey, I wanna process all five of these videos. I can just queue them up. It'll process that first one, it'll process the next one, process the next one and then it'll just go through the entire queue. So let's talk a little bit more about these operations for a queue. We had the NQ and the DQ operations. We can have other operations as well. And from language to language, we're probably going to have different method names. So let's go through an example with Python, and you can probably take this example and apply it to whatever programming language, whether it's Java or C Sharp, or bless your soul, JavaScript. You guys can figure it out. So what we would do is we would create some variables such as data, and we're going to start with an empty list. And the way you would enqueue data is you would say data.append, and you would pass in that data as an argument. So we'll just append the value five, but you could append anything you want here. You could do custom object, you could do another list. Be creative, I guess. And let's say we add another element. So we would say data.append. And this time we'll pass in 10. Here's how you can think about this structure now. We have the value five and we have the value 10. And this is probably a little bit contrary to what I was explaining earlier on, building it from the right. And it's all about perspective, as long as you're removing data from the appropriate side. So if we switched it around and considered this to be the front and this to be the back, then we can still use this as a queue. So we can actually dequeue this data coming from the left side rather than the right side. How would we do something like that inside of Python? We would say data dot pop, which seems like opposite of what we would want because that's for stacks. But the important thing here is that with Python, we can pass in an index. So we would say pop index zero, and that's going to return that element. Since we're not assigning it to a variable here right now, it's just going to vanish into uh, thin air. And then we could actually grab that next element and this time let's assign it to something. So we'll just say element is equal to data dot pop index zero. So notice we're using zero each time. So it's not like we're popping off that element and then we move up an element because if we just look at this first operation data dot pop, here's what's gonna happen. This element's gonna be removed and then all the other elements are going to shift down. So now 10 is at the front of the queue. And then when we say data.popindex0, we grab that element 10. If we wanted to do the peak operation that we talked about with stacks, all you would have to do is check that first element. So for example, in this situation here, you could just say data index zero, square brackets here, and that's going to grab that first element, but it's not actually going to remove that element. So if you had a little bit of understanding, you might have had a red flag go off in your brain. And that is when we get rid of that element, when we DQ that element, all the other elements have to shift down one, which is a pretty terrible operation because it's actually dependent on the list size. It's an N operation. So big O of N 
every single time we want to remove an element. That sucks. So there's probably various ways to get around something like this. For example, you could use a list in a different way. You could use an, a linked list and then just have a pointer to that last element. Then you can just grab it right away. Or inside of Python, there's actually another tool you can use called a DQ, just with QUE, not QUEUE. -E -E. And this is from collections. So you can say from the collections library, import DQ. We're not gonna talk about how to use that, but you can research that if you want to know a better way of implementing a queue structure inside of Python. So if you're doing something fairly simple, you can do this up here. It's not the end of the world. However, if your data set is going to be fairly large, you'll probably want to use this because this is constant time for inserts and retrievals. So this isn't gonna to have to do that weird shifting thing with all of the elements. It's gonna be a whole lot faster if your data set has a lot of elements. Well, I started this video thinking I was probably only gonna talk for a couple minutes, but somehow I ended up rambling for like half an hour. So I'm gonna take a break and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're gonna continue our discussion on data structures. Stay tuned and peace out.